All right, guys, chapter 13 of The Frog Princess. With Lil leading the way and Fang guarding us from behind, we soon we were soon back on the road to the castle. Mumbling her apologies, Lil flew to the first tree she could find. When we reached the tree, Fang pointed out her darker shape amidst, amidst the leafy shade. Lil, he hissed loudly, we are here. Go on without me, called back a tired voice. I'll catch up later. I need to sleep a little longer. We'll meet you at the castle, I shouted. Look for us by the drawbridge. Lil didn't answer. With a sleepy sigh, she'd already dozed off again. I hope she heard me, I said to Fang and Edric as we continued down the road. She's a bat, said Fang. I'm sure she heard you. However, bats traditionally sleep during daylight hours, and we have asked much of her today. She is also more timid than I expected now that she is out of her element, and I fear that she will be easily frightened for some time to come. I believe her bossy manner was a cover for her insecurities. Late that afternoon, a farm wagon leaving the castle grounds rumbled down the road. Fang moved off into the grass while Edric and I patiently waited for the wagon to pass. I was shielding my eyes from a cloud of dust when a young boy walking beside the wagon spotted us. Look, father, he called. Frogs, I'm going to catch them. Now, Robbie, said the farmer, why don't you leave them where they are? You take them home and they'll die just like the last ones. But I want to play with them, the boy insisted. Edric and I had heard the child and had no intentions of letting him catch us. I hustled Edric off the side of the road, following Fang into the tall grass. The boy who had seen us go ran over with a stick in his hand. I know you're in there, he said, squatting on his heels. Come out here where I can see you. The long stick jabbed the grass, narrowly missing us. Edric, trying to frighten the boy away by making himself look big and intimidating, straightened his legs and arms and put on his fierce fiercest expression. Since his legs were longer than his arms, his back end stuck up higher in the air, forcing him to tilt his head back to look at the boy. With the vial of dragon's breath still strapped to him, Edric looked like a bizarre multicolored hunchback, and what and I would have laughed if I hadn't seen if I hadn't been so frightened. Because he was in front of Fang, Edric couldn't see the snake rise his head above the grass and glare at the boy through slit slitted eyes. Fang hissed softly, and the boy nearly fell over his own feet, trying to get back to his father's wagon. Did you see that? Edric said proudly. I scared him off. I've, he'll think twice before coming after a frog again, won't he? I'm sure you're right, I said, especially one who travels with a snake. Next time he might even stay in the wagon. With the farm wagon and the boy gone, we returned to the road. The rosy glow of the sunset outlined the castle and made it seem all the more inviting. However, we had gone only a short distance when we felt the vibration of approaching vehicles. Soon, two more farm wagons and a tinker cart passed by. Petitioners from the village who had stayed late at court followed in the carriage. With so much traffic on the road, we decided that it was no longer safe and moved off into the fields. Traveling across the uneven ground was slower than it had been on the hard-packed dirt, and night fell before we reached the castle. The drawbridge was already up. It wouldn't be lowered again until morning. We were seated in the dust at the end of the road when Lil flew down to land beside us. There you are, she said. I've been looking all over for you. I don't like it out here. It's too open, and there's too much going on. I think I saw a hawk, although I'm not real sure. So where are we going now, Emma? Do you have any good hidey holes in the castle of yours? I'm sure we'll find plenty of places to hide, I assured her. But why don't you go and see if you can find my aunt first? That's her tower, the tall one on the left. She said she would be away for a few days, but she should be back by now. What about you? Are you gonna, going straight there? We have to get inside the castle, I explained, and the drawbridge is up. What's the problem, Lil asked. You're frogs. You can swim across the moat. I'll go up to the tower and take a peek inside. Now, you're sure your aunt won't mind? She won't mind at all. Go on ahead. We'll be there as soon as we can. I watched Lil become a dark speck as she flew over the moat. When I could no longer see her in the gloom, I turned and spoke to Fang. And what about you, Fang? Are you coming with us? No. I must return home now. I have much work to do to reestablish my territory. Thank you for being there all those times, I said, throwing my arms around him. You were right. We did need you. I know, and you're welcome. My hug made him uncomfortable, for he quickly backed away, eyeing me wearily. Emma, he said, because of your emotional demonstration, I must tell you something that I would not otherwise have disclosed. You can tell me anything, Fang. If anyone has the right, it's you. I understand that humans who, 
whose lives have been saved may feel a certain affection for their rescuers. If you are feeling such an affinity for me, you must know that my heart is engaged elsewhere. If he thought that I had a crush on him, I tried to la he thought I had a crush on him. I tried not to laugh and thought of a trick I'd learned when my mother caught me in a giddy mood and I knew she would disapprove if I laughed out loud. I had only to think of something sad, such as the depth of my first death of my first puppy, to make myself lose the desire to laugh. I tried it now and it worked, allowing me to alter my expression to one more suitable to a jilted female. Is it Clarice? I asked, looking mournful as I could. Yes, he said, nodding solemnly. You are not too too badly disappointed, are you? I'll recover, but it won't be easy. Good luck in your endeavors. And the same goes for you, Edric. Thanks, Fang. It was an experience having you along. I watched Fang slither down the road with mixed emotions. He was a snake, and I had always been terrified of snakes. Because I was now a frog, he should have been one of my worst enemies, yet he had proven to be a friend, someone I could trust when I was in danger. What did you mean when you thanked Fang like that? Edric demanded. He didn't do anything. And who was Clarice? And you accused me of being unobservant? Never mind, Edric. Maybe I'll tell you about it one day. Let's just say that he was a much better companion than either of us would have would thought he would be. I guess that's true, said Edric. At least he didn't eat us. <laughs>